us when we call, for arms us that lifts us when we fall. You've always been right beside us, leading us along the to be the trials we may have to face when you'll be leading by your grace it'll be your strength that saves us your love that makes us strong and through it all we'll sing the song so here Brothers and sisters, just bear with me. I'm here standing in the grace, to the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ. If it wasn't for him, I don't know which corner of the world I should be. Maybe down, downstairs, or me. I don't know. But now I know where I'm going and where I'm heading for. Brothers and sisters, this gospel here, it's a true gospel. I was wondering, thinking about it, you know, a lot of people say that we are cults. We know cults here. This message came in a hard way. I take my two sisters, sang the song, Mr. India, Sister Sheila, all the other saints has gone by. I want so many names to mention. But, sisters, they may be rejoicing eh? heading to this beautiful adult song. And you've got a good voice, I must say. Well, there's no stars, but stars in heaven. Brothers sisters, you look at number seven. God created the universe, took him six days, and the seven days he rested. I'm going to cut it short. And then you look at the seven church ages. You look at the seven stars, seven golden stand sticks. Brothers and sisters, we know how they fit. We know what the stars are, what the golden stick stands for. And now we are living in the Laodicean church age. A lot of people don't know this. We're not educated people. We didn't go to a university. But with God's spirit, he taught us. You know the days of Cthulhu? My sisters, Brother Ronnie, Pastor Deva, young and the old brothers, Brother Ronnie, witness how we started off. We didn't care. We took a walk. We didn't care where the next meal coming from, what blanket we slept, what mattress we slept. But it, the Lord provided. Pastor Deva, Mac, Power, Ronnie, witnessed that. 
but it was an enjoyable night. But there was capsizes, spoken words upside down. Inside, outside. It's good, nice. Power, that Mary was with us. Okay. And Mac, well, Mac was there. You know, Mac was a fire too as well. And no, you don't take nonsense. Okay. We have faults and failures in life, but the glorious truth is still shining. Okay, we didn't have the opportunity to see the prophet of the end time, but we had to stripes. You know, brothers and sisters, I always counted a Christian underdog. And when I got into this, when I got involved with Sister Jeeva, I said, no Christian dogs come to my house. I would draw that statement. Okay, now they're brothers and sisters. But brothers and sisters, it was the mighty hand of God to open up the scriptures, show me where we are. And uh, as for the prophet messages, we had a lot of people come and visit, go, and uh, Pastor Deva, I see you too. He yelled, this gospel is tight. Never let go. Not your money, not your car, not your house. He yelled it firm. Right. We did some funny things. Offered them a cup of tea or the enamel cup, but they drank it. They drank it. But when it came to the truth, they couldn't take it. They couldn't take it. Their eyes were closed, ears were clogged. Okay, they came and put up a nice beautiful building there. The Lord provided. We took it, we worshipped, and we moved, and they moved out. Brothers and sisters, I'll tell you, I won't let go of this gospel. I got my faults and failures. You know, I been some tough roads, and into the dark tunnel, there is light. I saw God's hands moving. Just lately, I think Pastor Deva had some dreams about me. And I can see it's coming, bearing fruits. In this age, I said, Lord, I've got a couple of days or hours to live. But in this life, I'm not secure. But I know I'm secure in your hands. I don't really think my concern goes to my family. But there too, he said, no, don't take, don't worry, he'll take care. Brothers and sisters, in this week here, or last week, I bought a small business with no funds in my pocket. I took a chance, I bought it. And some guys were telling me this, some guys were telling me that. I said, no, I'll leave it in the back of my head. I'll see what I can do with no funds. I was promised funds. They let me down, but the Lord provided. I took that and I bought a small business. I don't think I'm going to become a rich man. As long as I can put bread on the table, that is sufficient. Because he said, who shelter Raymond isn't sufficient. Brothers and sisters, from the house grain, seeing about this thing, I bought a fish and tackle, and I opened a plumbing and a hardware business. You know, I went to see my other brother. Over a cup of tea, we were chatting. And he told me, bro, you did the right decision take it. And I told him, you know what, I got some equipment, a jackhammer, generator, water pump, and my trailer. I use it for my work. Without that, I'll get dismissed from Metro. He said, is that so? And my jackhammer went missing, my generator got stolen, but the Johnny, Johnny knows it's an expensive tool. Gone. Generator was 10,000. Uh, breakers of about 25,000 gone. Anyway, the Lord provided. I was talking to my brother. I said, Peg, is that you? You operate with these things here? I said, yes. He said, you know what? I got a generator, I got a breaker, I got a chipper, I got a <laughs> you know, drilling machine. Come pick it up in your shop. I said, oh, thank you, Lord. That is to hire. You know, then it will be a hiring shop as well. You know, that who does that? Almighty God. You know, Almighty God does that. Nobody else. You know, brothers and sisters, I'm taking time. 
I want to bless the Lord. You know, he did mighty things, and I've been to some tough times, but he took me all. He took me out through it, and he blessed me, and I want to thank him for his blessing over me and over y'all. All my brothers and my sisters, and my two sisters sang a song. You're really blessed with that song. Thank you. God bless you. Amen. Thank you, Pastor Deva. Thank God for that testimony. I love to hear those old time <laughs> testimonies that come from back in the days. I know those people that came out from there, they had something genuine inside their heart. That's why if you look around, you can see them still sitting here. <clears throat> Many trials may have befallen us, but through much tribulation, we shall enter the kingdom of God. One day a man asked me, you're a Christian, but uh, you know, your life's supposed to be blessed and you know, you're supposed to have the best things in life. But my brothers and sisters, it's not what the Bible talks about, my brothers and sisters. If you look at every man of God, that's not the life that he lived, my brothers and sisters. The scripture says, through much tribulation, we shall enter the kingdom of God. And I'm so grateful for my brother and for his testimony. I think Brother Brandon has got a testimony today. I'd like to call upon him. <clears throat> Greetings, brothers and sisters, in the precious name of Jesus. I thank the Lord for giving me an opportunity uh, to praise his name. This testimony I have is a long testimony. It's coming from 2002. And if I were to tell, go through everything in detail, uh, then it's not going to be preaching. But I will just minimize everything, okay? Uh, uh, this is only, I want to say, what are, sometimes what are hard, hard to say, you know, to, for me to think and uh, say. But what I'm going to say is the hand of the Lord that has been upon us, upon our lives, and all that we've been through and survived and come through, it has only been the hand of the Lord. It was around 2002, I think it was, we applied in the police. And it was Ashley and myself and Isaac. I, I didn't make it because I applied with a birth certificate. <laughs> so they kicked me out. And uh, I remember Ashley made it with Isaac, but Ashley went in through another angle so they stopped him. The only person that went through was Isaac. But the journey to get there into the police, we told our parents, uh, we got a ticket, to buy us a ticket, we're going to the college. We first have to do a, a physical test and then they'll tell us. And uh, this policeman's waiting for us, they'll pick us and they'll take us to the place and bring us back. But you know, you're young now, I think I was 18, must be, 17, 18. There's no policeman waiting for us. We jump in the bus and we, we're going to Joburg now. That's all we know. Uncle Deva gave us some money and my father gave us some money. When we jumped in the bus, we prayed, but jumped in the bus, we prayed, we're going to Joburg now, but we don't, we, when they come to Joburg, we don't know where to go now. I mean, I'm scared. I'm the youngest. I'm scared. I'm talking to the two boys. They said, you know what? What's going to happen when we go to Joburg? And I remember Ashton, I said, relax, don't worry. God will make it. Just relax yourself. Came Joburg, we jumped off the bus. But it didn't stop at the, uh, where the terminal is now. Or it stopped by close to where Hillbrow is. So we jumped off now and we're walking. And me, I went in the center of both these boys now. <laughs> I said, hey, we bring. You ask Isaac and uh, you ask Isaac, he'll tell you. Uh, we saw a formula, uh, you know, a formula one. We said we'll go to that hotel for the night. And because opposite that was a police station. And then we get to the, as we're walking, I'm telling truthfully in our hearts we're praying. It's, it's no way possible. It is early hours of the morning. Three Indian boys walking down the road. They are vagrants sleeping in the side. And you know, Hillbro is at that time was a very uh, dangerous place. How we made it to the hotel, God only knows. Because while we're walking, I'm seeing a hand come under that cardboard. But that man is sleeping, having a dream. 
hey, I'm holding this bo boat boy's hand and I say, hey, come, let's go, please, let's go. And it's just they reassuring me, don't worry, we're in the center, nothing is going to happen. Then we go to the hotel. Whatever money we had, uh, we spent it on out for booking. We said in the morning, we'll go to the police station, we'll tell them our problem. And then when we go to the hotel now, we, we prayed. First thing we did went on is pray and say, thank you, Lord, you brought us here safe. We open our packets to eat. There is rolls, but no cheese. But there is a you know, quick packing now. The cheese was forgotten. Only the rolls was there. But we are hungry now. <laughs> and we only had money for Valpri water. What did it? We prayed. We said, let's have a shower. Late now it is. So in the morning, we just wash and we can go. And then we uh, went to the bathroom. Opening the taps, there's no hot water. So no, Ashley went first. As he said, Ashley, you go first. Then I'll come after them and we'll send let head. No, it's so there to be outside. <laughs> I think when you open the hot water, <laughs> he expected no water to come. Uh, Isaac and I in the, in the room now, in the bathroom, there, and he screamed. I said, I see what it is. No, 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 there's no hot water, man. <laughs> the phone, the hotel put said, uh, what's the story? He said, no, the late now, the cold water is only over here. We had a bath with cold water. Morning came. Said, right, we dress up, we prayed. Before we leave the hotel room, we prayed. Said, Lord, not. You see our situation here? <laughs> because our parents know we're safe with the police. We're from there, they're going to take us to the college, from the college, and bring us back in the bus, and we're going to come. So we went to the college. Isaac spoke to the man. He said, not, we had to write our test and do our physical. He said, oh, okay, and then how are you going to get? Now, from where we were, we need to go to Pretoria. And we've got no money now. <laughs> I mean, I'm praying. So, you know, in our hearts, I know we're praying because there's no way you're going to go. I'm telling you, I don't know how the, the white policeman, he just told to the men, they said, no, just these three boys want to be a police, put them in the back of the van, we'll go leave them in Pretoria. That's not normal. That is not normal. Where those, those vehicles are to go and catch criminals, you know. They put the three of us in the back of the van, they went left us in Pretoria. We did our tests and everything, and then we came back. Right through our journey in Joburg, Pretoria, went to uh, Isaac's cousin's house and then to my auntie with no money. It was only the end of the Lord that had been with us. True, we went and we came back safe, not a scratch in our bodies. But when we came back, we had a lot of stories to talk because the things we went through over there is, is humanly is not a, a you, you can't go to the taxi with no money and say, please give us a lift. We tell you, no, go. <laughs> You're going to come in my taxi, you got no money. God's hand of protection and mercy. I can, now when I look at it, I can tell that it was the hand of the Lord. Three small boys, oh, they're bigger than me, but I'm now small. And two bigger boys, I'm the smallest there. They, they have to look after me and themselves and try and move us around. If it was not for the Lord, we could have got attacked in Hillbrow. The police would have not taken us to um, Pretoria. We would have been stuck, then we would have found dead. Mom, here's the problem. <laughs> But God brought us safe. Amen. And then he took us through. We got jobs. And uh, then we, uh, I met that accident in 2008. But I tell you, from 2008 till now, I've been through, I was counting the other day, 10 operations. 10. From I'm operated from head to toe. Even I had ingrown toenails there to take it. <laughs> but you know, every surgery that I went to, the hand of the Lord was with me. There was not a surgery that I went to that I would say, you know what, I'm, I'm nervous. I'm, okay, the brain operation, I don't know, because I was unconscious. There, but the hand of the Lord was with me, because my dad told me, you know, there was a fuss there at uh, the trauma, uh, because they wanted money. But there was an Indian lady that came and said, do you hear the man's story? He lost a son, here's another son. I'm taking him to theater now. That things does not happen in private hospitals. That, They'll stabilize you there in the ambulance and send you to a provincial hospital. And remember, Isaac tell me, Ed, sorry, um, my name is Brent. <laughs> um, you know, they're in the provincial ambulance, you stop breathing. Then they're trying to revive you. Then you stop breathing, they're trying to revive you. And I told your father, Uncle Basil, mm -hmm. whatever happens, we're going to Amsterdam or And then a net care ambulance come, they put me in the ventilator. With no medical aid, you can't go to a private hospital. You, you can't. How I went there and stayed for 14 days, that was the end of the Lord. There was no hope. When I, when I spoke to the doctor, they said, you went flatline three times. 
Well, Flatlands no heartbeat. Fl uh, Flatlands no heartbeat, no breathing. How I came back was the grace of God. You don't know how excited I am because I can talk. A day I'd walk to and I tell him about my testimony. Say, hey, my man, God has a purpose for keeping you this far. Because from the brain surgery, then I went further. I had uh, my clavicle replaced. They put a plate in here. There, Isaac was with me over there. He looked after, I mean, I mean, Eddington Hospital now. And uh, far now from uh, home, Tongat now. And uh, my mother stayed with Auntie Jiva and Uncle Pregi, and they used to come visit me. And then Isaac sent a policeman who was guarding another prisoner. He told his lighty bro is there. Just check up on him. So some man, he come to me. He says, uh, your governor's brother. I said, yeah, no, we relate to cousin, brother. He said, okay, you want biscuits, coffee, two anything, ask me. I said, okay, thanks. Because uh, in the ward I was, I was the only Indian, and the rest of the people there were like uh, from prison, and some of them waiting for operations. So after seven days, then they operated me. Now when I'm going to theater, I saw no one now. My mind is all working. I'm saying, I'm going to theater. Isaac told if, he, if he's, six, he's seven to seven in the morning, he'll check me before I go to theater. I never spoke to anyone. They woke me up early, and I'm going. Yes, I'm going, just as the lift opened, you'll never believe Isaac stops the, so they all that. When I heard his voice, I know he's around. He said, Ed, everything's all right, my lady. I said, hey, Isaac, you know, I was waiting to see you. He said, can but when you get to theater. I said, yes, Isaac, tell the doctor you're here for a shoulder operation. So I asked him why, he said, Ed, just tell the doctor you're here for a shoulder operation, okay? He said, no, no, Isaac, I don't want to go, tell me why. Second, here in Eddington, you go for shoulder operation, your leg might be in your hand. <laughs> Just tell them you're here for shoulder operation. When I went into the theater, I kept telling the doctor, you know, I'm here for shoulder operation, I'm here for shoulder operation. <laughs> it's said, relax, but no. You know, when I did that operation, the hand of the Lord was there. Because when uh, they, they cut me out here on my shoulder, and then they says, you know what, the infection rate at a provincial hospital is very high. And then the doctor who did it said, you know what, we're going to have to uh, teach you to walk, so you're going to have to crawl first, then you have to stand up because they took a piece of the hip. But, uh, I think it was Friday I went for the operation, Saturday. Sunday when they came to see me, the doctor said, if you take one step, I'll, I'll send you up. I took two steps. <laughs> Not on my own strength, but by the strength of God. In my mind, I know if I'm going to stay here, there's going to maybe get infection. The doctor said he'll have to reopen and clean. I said, Lord, even if I take the one step, or he, the doctor said he's going to send me. Oh, two steps I took. Then I walked to the window. The man said to the nurse, you know what, send his discharge, let him go. Phone my father said, Dad, you know what? I'm discharged. He said, oh, you'll be discharged, hips, operation, shoulder. I said, you know what, I'm walking now. I thank the Lord because those were not small operations. Yeah. <clears throat> they were big operations. And for a small man like me, I'm... I'm my body star, I played soccer, I played volleyball, but that won't uh, make me to survive things like this. And then in 2013, 14, I went for the spine operation. That too now, they normally go through the back, they, they survived me here and they went through here. The doctor told me the same thing. You need a few, few days of uh, physio and all because uh, you know well, movement is going to be hard and uh, You'll have to try and come out quick because any operation, infection set in quick. I tell you the truth. When a doctor came two days later and he saw my improvement, he said, no, this man can go. But I'm telling you all this because it's not my strength. Not, nothing of my own made me to survive anything. It is just the mercy and grace of the Lord. Because if it was not for him, I would have died there in 2008. It's not by chance. As some people say at work, hey, you're lucky. I say, no, I'm not lucky. I'm, grace, uh, I'm surviving this by the grace of God. I survived this by the grace of God. Nothing on my own. Even this job that I started with, when, when I went in for this interview, this man is telling me, you know, the, you, you know how the ratio works here. Yeah. How you're going to get this is what you're going to talk. So I prayed, I went for it, I came back. A month later, I'm getting the call. When I started there, my boss, who is now, she said, you know how lucky you are to get into a state job because there are no more employing Indians. Yeah, I said, thank you, God, because... Mm, this thing I told me, it, it gets bored, especially for a young man. And I'm fit, I can work. I, you know, I'm feeling, compared to how I was, to what I am now. Yeah, I, I praise the Lord, I bless him, because I know what I was, I know what all the doctors said. said, no, your life is going to get difficult. A couple years from now, maybe you'll go redundant. 
uh, but I'm happy in my spirit because when I read, I get an understanding. When I, when I see other people who got same brain surgery and I see their their condition, I say thank you, Lord, because you brought me out of something which could have been very bad. And all the days of my life, I will praise Him because He's been very good to me. In, back in the days, um, I made my mistakes. I have my faults and failures, but His grace is sufficient for us. I thank the Lord for the word. I, I thank the Lord for truth in this hour. Just to be seated in the truth and to hear true words, or not uh, by the way, or something just to tickle, just to get happy and send the church away. No, we went deep into this thing. It's the exciting time. I was, we were talking before church, and I was telling to Uncle Deva, I was reading, and I came, my mind just went into Judas. Judas had everything for his time. He had the Messiah right there. He had a comforter. He had a healer. He had a good friend. He, he had everything whoever someone could have asked for in his days, but he chose to do the wrong. And then in my mind, I'm thinking, we have, he who overcome will, he who was born again will overcome this world. We have the spirit of God in us. And it's our choice now what we're going to do. We want to choose wrong or you want to choose right. We have a choice too. We may not have everything, but we have truth. That's all that matters to me now. Mm, I was talking, my wife and I were going to work, I think on Friday. Normally, I'm always in the center lane when you come to Argyle Robots. Because ah, the right lanes, they turn, uh, there's two that turn right and it's always busy. So I always stay in the center because the traffic flows. But that day, for some reason, yeah, my mind's not even telling me I go to the left lane. A center lane, it's easy. And in front of me, the fast lane, it's clear. There's not a car. So as I approached the robot, the robot turned red, so I stopped. Next to me was an Audi. Behind the Audi was a Tez, and behind the Tez was a sedan. So we were quite in the car. We were just waiting for the robot to change. And next minute, I hear the loudest screech. <coughs> That's big noise now. Looking this side, that's I'm trying to say, what's going on here? Then I heard bang, bang, bang. So I was on this side of me. And I turned, I see a van. I think it's the H100 or this, like, like the fishery vans. He hit the, the Toyota sedan, and the Toyota sedan hit the, the, the Taz. Today, when we were going to the village, and I'm saying to my wife, you know what? Normally, I'd be in the center lane. That day, um, I chose the right lane. That's not coincidence. We even left a little late from home. God, he talked to us, the still small voice. Because I can be there. I would, 100 to 1, I would have been there in the center lane. If it was any other day, I would have been there. I may have been the Taz or the Toyota sedan. But God saw it fit. He put no cars in the first lane. <laughs> he changed my thinking. He said, you just stay on the right lane. I thank the Lord for his blessings upon our life, his safety and mercy. We're living in very exciting times when, when you hear the word preached. I'm really grateful to the Lord that we uh, are living in a time like this. And for his glory, uh, I'll sing a song. Uh, we all can sing it. It's for God's glory. <coughs> Joresh. <laughs> Joresh got a very nice voice. <laughs> I have to. Once I stood in the night with my head bowed low in the darkness. 
colors as black as can be and I found that alone and I cried oh Lord don't hide your face from me my end all the way every hour every day come here to the great unknown take my hand and let Stand alone Like a king I may live In a palace so tall With great riches To call my own In this whole wide world That's worse than being alone Hold my hand all the way Every hour, every day From here to the great unknown Take my hand And let me stand Where no one stands alone Take my hand and let me stand where no one stands alone. Amen. We thank the Lord for that wonderful testimony. Uh, we thank the Lord, as young as uh, Brandon is, that he's been through so much in life, and uh, we see the hand of God over his life. Uh, I'm sure he can write a book, and he can maybe name it the God of the impossible. Uh, we thank God for all that he's done in the life of our brother, and in the life of every other saint here that has gone through much trials, much testimonies. We just want to give God all the glory, honor, and praise. We want to thank God for having a place like this that we can fellowship from week to week. <clears throat> we want to take this opportunity and thank our brother for the de dedication and for the effort of bringing us all into a state of understanding uh, the gospel in its simplest form. And uh, I once again want to thank every brother and sister. Your little contribution that you make in song singing and testimony and whatever you do for the church of the living God, there is a reward for us, uh, my brothers and sisters, maybe not in this life, but the Lord says our labor and our work of love is not gone unseen. So keep up the good work. And I pray that God, in, the, in 2019, we will walk in a much more united and in love and allow the gospel of Jesus Christ, the truth of his word, to 
enable us to walk much more uh, vigilant, much more closer to him. May the Lord bless you tonight. Shall we stand? <coughs> How great it is, his son, living God, who knows each breath I take, and every step I trod. How great God that's real Who sees my every year And he knows just how I feel I listen as a man cry out to his God of wind and stone And it broke my heart to see The tears he shed alone Then I knew that it was hopeless And he would not receive an answer from the God that cannot hear or speak. How great it is to serve a living God. breath I take and every step I draw how great it is to serve a God that's real who sees my end and he knows just how I feel. Then I fell down on my knees to pray, like so many times before. And I humbly asked my God. Lord, hear my prayer once more. Then it seemed like the heavens opened up, and I could hear him say, Oh, yes, my child, I can hear you. What do you How great it is to serve a living God Who knows it breath I take And every step I draw How great it is a God that's real Who sees my every year And he knows just how I feel Amen. Over to my brother Deva.
Amen. We will thank the Lord. We're just going to give away for the word of God this evening. Brother Jace Pillay is going to be preaching to us. Brother Jace, you can come over. Mm. My brothers and sisters, I greet you in the wonderful name of Jesus this evening, my brothers and sisters. Thank God for his hands of mercy, all those testimonies and songs. We thank the Lord for that, my brothers and sisters. At this time, my brothers and sisters, we want to get into prayer, my brothers and sisters. Let's bow our heads this evening, my brothers and sisters. Heavenly Father, we come to you this evening, Lord. We thank you, God, Father, for this hour and time, Lord, that you have given unto us, my God. Oh, to fellowship amongst brethren, my God, and sisters, my God, we thank you, God, for every one of your children that have come here, Lord. Lord, you see a draw, my God, and a pull, my God, upon their lives, my God, to come to hear to your precious word, my God. I thank you, God, Father, for this time, Lord. We pray that your spirit would, my God, Father, visit us this evening, Lord, to the preaching of your word, my God. I pray, Father, even as, my God, your word will be ministered, Lord. I pray, Lord, it will find a bedding ground, my God. Lord, when we leave this place, my God, Lord, that we would have learned something, my God. For truly, Lord, we see the hour is late, my God. The night is far spent, my God. And tonight, this evening, we pray, God, that you are able, Lord, Father, to take this word, my God. Lord, I am only a mortal vessel, my God. I pray that you take me, Lord, Father. You will use me. You will strengthen this body of mine, Lord. You will strengthen my leg, my God, and you strengthen this body and mind, Lord. You will strengthen my heart here this day, Lord. I pray, God, that you will strengthen your children here, yeah, Lord, as, Lord, they uh, will hear to your word, Lord. I pray, Lord, that will be in simplicity, my God. And I pray, Father, that you will come, Lord, and visit us, Lord, and you will take charge, my God. Tonight I come, Lord, binding every work of Satan, my God. Lord, we come against his work, my God. We pray, Lord, that you will, Father, make way for thy word, Lord. And I know, Lord, Father, that there is a bearing ground, Lord. And there is a table tonight, Lord. Bless your children, Lord. Undertake for them, Lord. And for those that are not here, Lord, I commit them in your hands, Lord. Wherever they are tonight, Lord. I pray, God, that you will be with them, Lord. And we ask all these mercies in the precious name of Jesus. Amen. My brothers and sisters, you may be seated. Amen. 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 We want to thank the Lord this evening, my brothers and sisters, <clears throat> for this hour and time he has given us, my brothers and sisters, we thank him, my brothers and sisters, for this opportunity where we can spend a couple of days, my brothers and sisters, in feeding on God's word, my brothers and sisters. We want to bless him for that, my brothers and sisters. And this evening, my brothers and sisters, I have here, my brothers and sisters, a message, my brothers and sisters, upon my heart tonight, my brothers and sisters. And, uh, you know, I wasn't sure, my brothers and sisters, how God was going to lead me. And I was really, you know, stressing about it, my brothers and sisters. And I just thought, you know, <laughs> what my brother Deva goes through, my brothers and sisters. You know, sometimes, my brothers and sisters, it's just not so easy, my brothers and sisters, to just take this Bible and read, my brothers and sisters. Sometimes you've got to wait on the Lord, my brothers and sisters. Wait, my brothers and sisters. And you know, my brothers and sisters, um, these weathers were not good, my brothers and sisters, and, and I was getting a headache, my brothers and sisters, because of these weathers, my brothers and sisters, and, you know, the aircon was giving me a headache, and, and, and I told Sam, you know, I need you to uh, just massage my head and, you know, just give, put some Vicks, my brothers and sisters. I could lie down, my brothers and sisters. And, you know, my brothers and sisters, she told me that, uh, you know, that she had prayed for my head, my brothers and sisters, and... As I just put my head on the bed, my brothers and sisters, and the Lord just put something in my heart, my brothers and sisters. And I just got up, my brothers and sisters. It was like 
I was a new man, my brothers and sisters. It was like a joy that came into my soul, my brothers and sisters. And I said, God, thank you. You know, waiting on God, my brothers and sisters, sometimes, you know, it takes a lot of patience, my brothers and sisters. And this evening, I just, I have titled this message, my brothers and sisters, The Bride's Distress Call at the End Time, my brothers and sisters. The Bride's Distress Call at the End Time, my brothers and sisters. So, that is the message that I have here tonight, my brothers and sisters. And I pray this evening God would help me with this message, my brothers and sisters. And I know, my brothers and sisters, that God is working, my brothers and sisters. It's not us, my brothers and sisters. It's God is working in, in his church, in his ministry, and in his people, my brothers and sisters. And I want to just look at this subject here, my brothers and sisters. And, um, you know, when this, this thought came to me, my brothers and sisters, the first thing came to my mind, my brothers and sisters, about this barnyard story, my brothers and sisters, that Brother Brandon would always, always use, my brothers and sisters. He used this barnyard story, my brothers and sisters, many times in his sermon, my brothers and sisters. And he used it for a certain message that he had upon his heart, my brothers and sisters. And I know, my brothers and sisters, it is a story that will help any child, my brothers and sisters, that is struggling, my brothers and sisters, and especially, my brothers and sisters, when you are coming out from a system, my brothers and sisters, from a demo, uh, denomination system, and you are coming out, my brothers and sisters. This, this story goes, my brothers and sisters, where this farmer, my brothers and sisters, has found his egg, my brothers and sisters, and somehow he knew this egg must have come from somewhere, my brothers and sisters, and he realized this was an eagle's egg, my brothers and sisters. And he knew that this egg, my brothers and sisters, needed the warmth, my brothers and sisters. And it needed, my brothers and sisters, some sort of bird to sit on this egg, my brothers and sisters. And there's no way he can return this egg, my brothers and sisters, to that eagle because he doesn't know, my brothers and sisters. So he decides to put this egg, my brothers and sisters, under this hen, my brothers and sisters. And after that time, my brothers and sisters, this egg, my brothers and sisters, hatched, my brothers and sisters. And it hatched into a eaglet, my brothers and sisters, a young eagle, my brothers and sisters. And the story goes, my brothers and sisters, that this eagle, my brothers and sisters, was completely different from all the other chicks, my brothers and sisters. It was so much so, my brothers and sisters, this eagle didn't understand itself, my brothers and sisters. It didn't know, my brothers and sisters, what am I doing in this place here? Because I see myself different, my brothers and sisters. And you know, this eagle, my brothers and sisters, continuously ran after that mother hen, my brothers and sisters. And he noticed also, my brothers and sisters, the sound of that mother, my brothers and sisters, and the sound of that eaglet, the chicklets, my brothers and sisters. They were different. So he began to understand, what is this? How can I am different? So, my brothers and sisters, this eagle, my brothers and sisters, knew somewhere along the line that he was an odd uh, one, my brothers and sisters. And that's how, my brothers and sisters, you see, my brothers and sisters, that's how this eagle, my brothers and sisters, knew in his mind that he was a different species, my brothers and sisters. And you know, my brothers and sisters, when the mother eagle, the hen used to give, Air chicks, all those worms, my brothers and sisters, and all this dirt, my brothers and sisters, from this barnyard situation, my brothers and sisters. This eaglet, my brothers and sisters, I don't think it was able to set well with that, my brothers and sisters. You know that, that menu there, I don't think it was able to eat it, my brothers and sisters. Because he was an eagle, my brothers and sisters. And you know, my brothers and sisters, so one day, my brothers and sisters, you know this mother eagle knew, my brothers and sisters, that she had lost one of her eggs, my brothers and sisters. She knew the time she had lost it, my brothers and sisters. And she knew, my brothers and sisters, the time that this eagle would be born in this barnyard, my brothers and sisters. And so one day, my brothers and sisters, she just came down from that mountain, my brothers and sisters. And she scooped upon that barnyard, my brothers and sisters. And as she flew over that barnyard, my brothers and sisters, she recognized a eaglet, my brothers and sisters. And you know, the eagle has such powerful eyes, my brother and sister. He knew, she knew that was a, a son, my brother and sisters. And you know, my brother and sisters, on the next round, my brother and sisters, 
He went down again and he called. And he called to that eaglet. And you know, my brothers and sisters, there was a call made, my brothers and sisters. As an eagle heard to that voice, my brothers and sisters. He heard that voice, my brothers and sisters. It was not the sound of a clock, my brothers and sisters, a clock or whatever the end has, my brothers and sisters. You know, end makes a funny sound, my brothers and sisters, and especially when they're hungry. Their sound go louder and louder, and it becomes more frequent. That is the time you run away. You don't go anywhere near the hen, my brothers and sisters. But you know, my, my brother and sister, this eagle went down and the eagle had heard this call, my brother and sisters. And you know, my brother and sisters, the eagle this knew it was a own, my brother and sisters. And he said, you know, I'm coming to pick you up. I am coming to lift you up. I'm not going to leave you there. And he, he, you know, my brother and sister, he said, he, he said to his uh, son, eaglet, my friends, I want you to flap your wings. You are not a chicken. You don't belong in that barnyard. Flap your, flap your wings, my brothers and sisters. And this is how this eagle, first time, he started to flap his wings, my brothers and sisters. Because the other time, he was just running around with his, with his wings flapping on the side, my brothers and sisters. This one time here, yeah, my brothers and sisters, this mother eagle called out to her eaglet and said, Rise, my brothers and sisters. And this eagle rise, rose, my brothers and sisters. And he stood on that fence, my brothers and sisters. And there comes his mother eagle, my brothers and sisters. Picks this bird up, my brothers and sisters. This eagle up and takes her away, my brothers and sisters. And that is how, my brothers and sisters, when William Branham came on the scene, my brothers and sisters, his call was to the bride, my brothers and sisters. And he said to the, to the bride, my brothers and sisters, Come out of there, my people. Don't be partakers of their sins, my brothers and sisters. You'll read that, my brothers and sisters, in Revelation 18.4, my brothers and sisters. Where Brother Branham, my brothers and sisters, the seventh church messenger, my brothers and sisters, he preached and he screamed out, my brothers and sisters, come out of there, my people. Don't be, don't be, my brothers and sisters, partakers of their sins, my brothers and sisters. But a brand new scream, my brothers and sisters, and that sound of the shout, my brothers and sisters, it echoed, my brothers and sisters, it vibrated, my brothers and sisters, into the corridors of hell also, my brothers and sisters. Satan knew, my brothers and sisters, this seven church messenger, my brothers and sisters, will bring a message, my brothers and sisters, a message of restoration, my brothers and sisters. And you know, this eagles, my brothers and sisters, after my brothers and sisters, the great, my brothers and sisters, you know, the Stuart my brothers and sisters and this great Pentecostal revival my brothers and sisters this eagle my brother, these eaglets my brothers and sisters they hear a clarity call my brothers and sisters and they my brothers and sisters looked up to heaven my brothers and sisters and they knew the mother eagle was calling them my brothers and sisters this mother eagle was calling them with a word my brothers and sisters and you know to stay my brothers and sisters there was my brothers and sisters a shout ministry my brothers and sisters and I believe my brothers and sisters there were eagles that came out my brothers and sisters and they heard a call my brothers and sisters and you know my brothers and sisters that call my brothers and sisters that set my brothers and sisters the last day church my brothers and sisters on his path my brothers and sisters and therefore my brothers and sisters you see that midnight call my brothers and sisters that went out my brothers and sisters and the foolish virgins and the, and the, and the wise virgins my brothers and sisters came in my brothers and sisters but you know the why the foolish virgins they slept slept my brothers and sisters they decide to go and buy and sell my brothers and sisters but you know the wise my brothers and sisters they went into a revelation my brothers and sisters they went in my brothers and sisters and you know when they went into a, a, a revelation my brothers went my brothers and sisters the bride my brothers and sisters the bridegroom was dealing with them my brothers and sisters there was a word, my brother and sister, that God was giving out, my brother and sisters. There was a washing process, my brother and sisters. And you know, my brother and sisters, when you see that fivefold ministry, and when you see Brother Jackson, my brother and sister, you know, my brother and sisters, when you see him stand in lining up the word of God, my brother and sisters, you know, when Brother Brandon in 1963, my brother, 1964, my brother and sisters, in 3rd July, 
third July, my brothers and sisters, when he saw the bride, my brothers and sisters, walk, my brothers and sisters, in a vision, he saw this bride, my brothers and sisters, and you know the way of all nations, my brothers and sisters, well adorned, my brothers and sisters, they had long hair, my brothers and sisters, well attired, my brothers and sisters, they were not looking like the systems, my brothers and sisters, what you, what he saw in that time, my brothers and sisters, he said, God, thank you, at least by work as all the work that I've placed, at least I know there is a people, my brothers and sisters. He was glad in his heart, my brothers and sisters. He saw all the churches, my brothers and sisters. He saw the church of the United States also, my brothers and sisters. I don't want to tell you, my brothers and sisters, you know that and you know the world's churches today, my brothers and sisters, and I believe, my brothers and sisters, God had a purpose in sending Malachi for five, my brothers and sisters. And this day, my brothers and sisters, when you see, my brothers and sisters, Brother Branham coming back, my brothers and sisters, to that church, my brothers and sisters, he see a young generation, my brothers and sisters, in his dream, in his vision, sorry, my brothers and sisters, and he see a young, a young ones, my brothers and sisters, in the region of 20 years old, and he saw them, my brothers and sisters, stepping out of line, my brothers and sisters, and he screamed again, my brothers and sisters. He said, stay in line. Amen. He said, stay in line, my brothers and sisters. I believe, my brothers and sisters, Brother Jackson's ministry was well, stay in line, my brothers and sisters. That is the ministry, my brothers and sisters, taking these young people, my brothers and sisters, for another generation, my brothers and sisters. And you have another generation, my brothers and sisters. Yet today, my brothers and sisters, they are the last generation, my brothers and sisters. And I believe, my brothers and sisters, the fivefold ministry, my brothers and sisters, is leading this generation, my brothers and sisters. I believe the fivefold, my brothers and sisters, Brother Jackson has done his work, my brothers and sisters. He stood, my brothers and sisters, day in, day out, my brothers and sisters. The things that he had went through, my brothers and sisters. The stress and the strain, my brothers and sisters, holding this word, my brothers and sisters. I believe, my brothers and sisters, you can only hear that, my brothers and sisters, in his preaching. And his tone, my brothers and sisters, over that 40 years, my brothers and sisters. And therefore, this day, my brothers and sisters, I want to say to you, my brothers and sisters, God has men on the scene, my brothers and sisters. He has a ministry, my brothers and sisters, that are taking us through. They are taking us through, my brothers and sisters. This fivefold, present fivefold ministry, my brothers and sisters, they are scattered around the world, my brothers and sisters. Right. And I want to tell you this day, my brothers and sisters, they are going to take us through, my brothers and sisters. That is for sure, my brothers and sisters, because they are all lining up, my brothers and sisters. I believe, my brothers and sisters, if you line up, God will take you through, my brothers and sisters. Like you took Brother Jackson and Brother Branham, my brothers and sisters, giving them a wonderful ministry, my brothers and sisters. You know, my brothers and sisters, when you look at our time, my brothers and sisters, when you look at our time, my brothers and sisters, we are narrowing, we are coming to a narrowing point, my brothers and sisters. And you know, my brothers and sisters, I cannot even stress, my brothers and sisters, the hour we're living in, my brothers and sisters. The hour we're living in, my brothers and sisters. I want you to turn to my brothers and sisters. <coughs> Second Timothy 3 1, my brothers and sisters. <coughs> Chapter Chapter 3, my brothers and sisters, Second Timothy. This know also that in the last days perilous times shall come. For men shall be lovers of their own selves, covetous, boasters, proud, blasphemous, disobedient to parents, unthankful, unholy, my brothers and sisters. So, my brothers and sisters, we are in this time, my brothers and sisters. And God, my brothers and sisters, is allowing Timothy, <coughs> Paul is writing to Timothy, my brothers and sisters, and he's telling him, my brothers and sisters, the condition of the last days, you know, my brothers and sisters. You know, the Jews also believed that they had a last day, my brothers and sisters. But the scriptures say the end wouldn't be at that time, my brothers and sisters. So, this year, my brothers and sisters, is what we see here today, my brothers and sisters. Without natural affection, truth breakers, false accusers, incontinent, fierce, despisers of those that are good. Now, my brothers and sisters, what you're seeing here is a, pit, 
is a picture, my brothers and sisters, of the condition that we are living in, my brothers and sisters. You must remember, my brothers and sisters, when this ministry of Brother Branham came, my brothers and sisters, it was after the Second World War, my brothers and sisters. And the Great Depression was there, my brothers and sisters. Family structure was completely broken, my brothers and sisters. Because many men had went, they had been into the wars. And there were a lot of men that died in the war, my brothers and sisters. Some of these children have grown without parents, my brothers and sisters. Without fathers, my brothers and sisters. And you know, my brothers and sisters, that was a pivotal time, my brothers and sisters, when God was able to, my brothers and sisters, meet the need of those children and those people crying out to God, my brothers and sisters. You know, the church went to sleep, my brothers and sisters, but you know, my brothers and sisters, God had a few there, my brothers, praying unto him, my brothers and sisters. They were calling unto him, my brothers and sisters, in that time of all that was happening, my brothers and sisters, around the world, my brothers and sisters. Remember, my brothers and sisters, when those two wars came, my brothers and sisters, that set the fire, my brothers and sisters. It set the fire in the world, my brothers and sisters, for all these things to come, all these wars and rumors. So, therefore, when you see here today, my brothers and sisters, these perilous times, my brothers and sisters, this gives us the picture, my brothers and sisters, the condition that we are in, my brothers and sisters. The Bible says it's in the last days, we are in the last days, my brothers and sisters. Perilous times shall come. And we are living in that perilous time, my brothers and sisters. It could be the beginning of the perilous time, my brothers and sisters. But it is, my brothers and sisters. And therefore, my brothers and sisters, this is the condition of the world and people, my brothers and sisters. And that's why it's very, very important to know, my brothers and sisters, the condition, my brothers and sisters, that we are in. And you know, my brothers, it's a time of stress. It is a stressful time, my brothers and sisters. Dangerous time, my brothers and sisters. And these are also called the last days, my brothers and sisters. And I want to tell you this, my brothers and sisters, that God doesn't play around and mess around with his words, my brothers and sisters. You know, when God says it's going to be done, it's going to be done, my brothers and sisters. God is true to his word, my brothers and sisters. And you know, my brothers and sisters, when you look carefully, my brothers and sisters, this time period, my brothers and sisters, there's also a similar time period, my brothers and sisters, when we're living in. In Matthew 24, my brother, this you can turn over there. <coughs> Matthew 24. I'm just going to <coughs> look at uh, 24 verses uh, 4, my brother and sisters. <coughs> verses 4, my brother and sisters. And Jesus answered and said unto them, Take heed that no man deceive you. So, my brothers and sisters, while you have these personalities and these bad traits, my brothers and sisters, you also have men would deceive you in this hour, my brothers and sisters. So, where will those people come? They will come from various organizations, they will come from the church. They will come from families. They will even come from within our assembly, my brothers and sisters. Remember, as I said, my brothers and sisters, this is a very serious walk, my brothers and sisters. For many shall come in my name, saying, I am Christ, and shall deceive many. And ye shall hear of wars and rumors of wars. See that you be not troubled, my brothers and sisters. For all these things must come to pass. But the end is not yet. You see, the Jews also use the scripture, my brothers and sisters. When Christ spoke to them, my brothers and sisters, he said, but the end is not yet, my brothers and sisters. My brothers and sisters, there's no two ways you can deny there was, there's no earthquakes, my brothers and sisters. This year alone, there's 13,000 earthquakes, my brothers and sisters. So, in diverse places, my brothers and sisters, and I believe, my brothers and sisters, this birth pang, my brothers and sisters, is going to continue, my brothers and sisters. This, the, the birth pang, my brothers and sisters, the, the, the contractions, my brothers and sisters. The period of contraction will get shorter, my brothers and sisters. 
and the turmoil will get greater my brothers and sisters so therefore we can see my brothers and sisters that this year is what we are seeing for nation shall rise against nation kingdom against kingdom and there shall be famine my brothers and sisters pestilence and earthquake in diverse places all these are the beginning of sorrow brother jackson my brothers and sisters he, he preached many times on this my brothers and my brothers and sisters and you know my brothers and sisters we are seeing many of this my brothers and sisters. it couldn't it, it may not be in its full extent my brothers and sisters we have many more years to go by not sure how long the time my brothers and sisters god knows the time my brothers and sisters but i want to my brothers and sisters i have here contender my brothers and sisters <clears throat> this contender here my brothers and sisters from the beginning to the end my brothers and sisters and um, brother jackson preached this my brothers and sisters in october uh, 1999 my brothers and sisters it's many years ago that he preached this my brothers and sisters it's from that series the beginning to the end my brothers and sisters and entitled it birth pangs my brothers and sisters a time of trouble my brothers and sisters brother jackson my brothers and sisters was in prayer my brothers and sisters and after he got up prayer my brothers and sisters he took a notepad my brothers and sisters and he wrote a few things my brothers and sisters and this is what he wrote my brothers and sisters i'm not going to read the other things you can um download this my brothers and sisters it's on the website birth pains my brothers and sisters this is what he is now writing birth pains a time of trouble a time of trouble is the beginning of many problems that shall develop in the world in order to put nations and the political picture of things in proper order it is supposed to be in so the word of god can be fulfilled this time of trouble my brothers this time of trouble shall affect economics in some nations domestic and social problems shall break out in many places we cannot deny my brothers and sisters we have seen a picture like this my brothers and sisters racial tension will develop and arise which will be the beginning of matthew 24 that's what he says here my brothers and sisters they shall be distress of nations nature will explode into giant earthquakes torrential storms will bring the loss of much life and property thousands of people will become displaced and become refugees to wander from place to place this is what brother jackson the lord revealed to him my brothers and sisters in 1999 my brothers and sisters and you cannot say my brothers and sisters you know this is for another time we are seeing all of this my brothers and sisters in his, it could be in his infant stage it could be somewhere my brothers and sisters way beyond brother jackson when he saw this my brothers and sisters down the road my brothers and sisters and i want to say to you this day my brothers and sisters that this my brothers and sisters this picture here yeah, my brothers and sisters if it doesn't my brothers and sisters help us to understand the time we living in my brothers and sisters then you are far away my brothers and sisters we got to check our experience in this time my brothers and sisters it's very important to know that my brothers and sisters so when you look at this picture here yeah, when you have my brothers and sisters god showing you the attributes of man my brothers and sisters and you know my brothers and sisters the nature of man my brothers and sisters in the last days perilous times shall come and when you take this picture here yeah, and you see it's an updated picture my brothers and sisters today you have an updated picture from that because you can see this picture here yeah, is practically happening before you my brothers and sisters and i want to say to you my brothers and sisters now it brings to you the things the bible never say my brothers and sisters but god had revealed it to his prophet to his apostle my brothers and sisters because brother jackson is fulfilling scripture he is counting the dots my brothers is he is plotting the dots my brothers and sisters and you know through his ministry god was able to develop my brothers and sisters and fill in the gaps my brothers and sisters and those gaps are very important we cannot disregard it my brothers and sisters 
Then you see, my brothers and sisters, that while, while we see this, my brothers and sisters, we see also that <clears throat> there is another picture also that runs, my brothers and sisters. All these pictures are running concurrently, my brothers and sisters. Side by side, they are moving simultaneously and they are achieving what they are supposed to achieve in this world and in our lives, my brothers and sisters. But in the days, my brothers and sisters, I want you to turn to same uh, chapter 24, verses 37. But in the days of Noah, where, but as in the days of Noah, where, so shall also the beginning of the Son of Man be. For as in the days that were before the flood, they were eating, they were marrying, they were drinking, and they were giving in marriage until... The day that Noah entered the ark, <clears throat> God was very clear there, my brothers and sisters. He made it, he put it down there until the day Noah entered the ark. So God, grace, my brothers and sisters, in this time, yeah, will be to that generation, my brothers and sisters. Will ye, yeah, my brothers and sisters, will ye, yeah, this clarion call, my brothers and sisters, this this call of that eagle, mother and sister, anointing, mother and sisters, right up the day, mother and sister, when we go into that rapture, mother and sisters. And I believe that, mother and because you see, this is the last generation. God is giving an opportunity for all of his children, mother and sisters. And he knew until the flood came and took them away, so shall also the coming of the Son and Man be, mother and sisters. So, that was, that was what God, my brothers and sisters, painted in our minds. Yeah, now, yeah, now, you see now around our areas, we see they are eating. We all eat, but some people, my brothers and sisters, they only live for eating. <laughs> Drinking, my brothers and sisters, they drink, we all drink tea and water. But you know, my brothers and sisters, this year is when you get intoxicated and you don't know, my brothers and sisters, what you stand for, my brothers and sisters. You are drinking poison, my brothers and sisters, and you don't know, my brothers and sisters. Marrying, my brothers and sisters. I don't have to tell you that Brother Deva has preached many sermons on these things, my brothers and sisters. Giving in marriage until the day Noah entered the ark, my brothers and sisters. So those things all can be messages on its own, my brothers and sisters. And you know, my brothers and sisters, God is very clear, my brothers and sisters, about his bride, my brothers and sisters. Amen. Knowing all of this, my brothers and sisters, that he's in this last day church, my brothers and sisters, crowding the children of God, my brothers and sisters, persecuting the children of God, my brothers and sisters, putting them in a distressful state, my brothers and sisters, putting stress and strain my brothers and sisters, and you know, my brothers and sisters, distress upon his children, my brothers and sisters. You know that word distress, my brothers and sisters, is a medical term, my brothers and sisters. It's a term when you fall sick, my brothers and sisters, out of depression, my brothers and sisters, lack, my brothers and sisters, and a whole lot of things that, my brothers and sisters, that shows, my brothers and sisters, this distressful time that we are having, mother and sisters. Our mothers, mother and sisters, they worry about our children, mother and sisters. They are distressed, mother and sisters. Like that mother eagle, mother and sisters, who lost that one egg, mother and sisters. She sat on those other eggs, mother and sisters. And you know, mother and sisters, in the time that she sat, mother and sisters, she was thinking about that one egg, mother and sisters. And you know, my brothers and sisters, when she had given, when those egg all hatched, my brothers and sisters, she couldn't wait, my brothers and sisters, to go into the skies, my brothers and sisters, to look, my brothers and sisters, in that distressed state, my brothers and sisters. She went down, my brothers and sisters. Eagles don't go down, my brothers and sisters. Where do you see an eagle going down? Only if an eagle is sick, my brothers and sisters, will go down into the ground. Looking for something, my brothers and sisters. Looking for a food. But you know, the moment they get it, they go up, my brothers and sisters. That is where they belong. 
So, my brothers and sisters, the bride, my brothers and sisters, is in, the, is in the distressed state, my brothers and sisters. And I believe, my brothers and sisters, we are going through this, my brothers and sisters. We are this generation, my brothers and sisters. Like you see there, my brothers and sisters, in Matthew 24, 34, my brothers and sisters. Verily I say to you, this generation shall not pass, my brothers and sisters, till all these things can be fulfilled, my brothers and sisters. So we are this generation, my brothers and sisters. Young and old, my brothers and sisters, we will see this before our eyes. Just like my brother Simeon, my brothers and sisters, he was that yastic, my brothers and sisters. And he said, my brothers and sisters, I have seen, my brothers and sisters, the Christ, my brothers and sisters, the Christ, my brothers and sisters, the Lord's Christ, you have seen, my brothers and sisters. That was a time frame, my brothers and sisters. For an old man, my brothers and sisters, I believe this time God has got people here, my brothers and sisters. In this generation, my brothers and sisters, that will see, my brothers and sisters, to the end, my brothers and sisters. Because you know a generation, my brothers and sisters, in the first age, age my brothers and sisters, you know what happened there, my brothers and sisters. In the first hundred years, before that first hundred years, my brothers and sisters, the church, when those apostle, apostolic fathers and the believers were getting old, they died, my brothers and sisters. There were no more, my brothers and sisters, people who could move on and take it until the second and the third centuries came in, my brothers and sisters. That's how Satan was able to move and capture the church, my brothers and sisters. By the fifth century, the Roman Catholic Church had already taken over, my brothers and sisters. But God will never allow that, my brothers and sisters. His word, my brothers and sisters, and his bride, and his Israel, my brothers and sisters, are the two things before him, my brothers and sisters. They are moving parallel, my brothers and sisters. And all these conditions that we talked about, they are moving parallel, my brothers and sisters. And you know Israel, my brothers and sisters, they are also having their own things happening, my brothers and sisters. Their challenges, my brothers and sisters. And remember, they have these two wars, my brothers and sisters. These two wars, my brothers and sisters, are going to be a, a, a distressing time for them, my brothers and sisters. They are, my brothers and sisters, a nation that is under siege at the moment, my brothers and sisters. Where you have all these Arab nations around them, my brothers and sisters. They are pressing against them, my brothers and sisters. And you know she's standing your ground, my brothers and sisters. We have to stand our ground. We have to stand our ground, my brothers and sisters. We got to push this enemy back, my brothers and sisters. And I believe, my brothers and sisters, we are moving simultaneously with Israel, my brothers and sisters. And you know, when these two wars, especially this war, my brothers, of, of the miraculous, my brothers and sisters, this will set this time of trouble, my brothers and sisters. This will set the time of trouble, my brothers and sisters, in this rightful uh, timepiece, my brothers and sisters. And I believe the bride will know it, my brothers and sisters. The bride will know it, my brothers and sisters. And you know, my brothers and sisters, while we are on this earth, my brothers and sisters, this time of trouble and the birth pangs, my brothers and sisters, that Israel will face, my brothers and sisters, it will affect us. It's generally going to affect us, my brothers and sisters. It's not going to leave us. Remember, there's two things, my brothers and sisters, that God's eyes upon. His bride, and he's watching them, my brothers and sisters. He doesn't want them to just get lost into this world. He doesn't want them, my brothers and sisters, to return to the world. His son is waiting for, the land, for, the, for his wife. So his wife can't run away, my brothers and sisters. She cannot take a U-turn and go somewhere else and join the mother of all the church. You see, the wife doesn't belong there. You see, my brothers and sisters, and this stressful time, my brothers and sisters, is what we are looking at, my brothers and sisters. It's a short period of time. That's why, my brothers and sisters, I titled it The Bride's Distress Call at the End Time, my brothers and sisters. This distress call, my brothers and sisters, is what, my brothers and sisters, will affect this world, my brothers and sisters, and affect us, my brothers and sisters. We are not immune, my brothers and sisters, by what's going to happen to those towards them, my brothers and sisters. We are going to see and we are going to feel, my brothers and sisters, economic difficulties. 
Because you know, my brothers and sisters, when Donald Trump does something, my brothers and sisters, God has put in his heart, my brothers and sisters, to achieve his will. Not the, words, the world's will, my brothers and sisters. So therefore, it's important to understand, if the world gloats about the, the, the blessing that they have, and all the hard work, and the economies that they have developed, my brothers and sisters, there's no glory to God there, my brothers and sisters. When, the, when all these currencies, my brothers and sisters, they are flourishing, there's no joy there, my brothers and sisters. What is, the world is enjoying themselves, my brothers and sisters. And God's eye is on his bride and on his Israel, my brothers and sisters. What you think, God is not jealous of his people, my brothers and sisters. I believe you will be jealous. Because you know why? Because all in those systems there, my brothers and sisters, a whole bunch of unbelievers. They are running the show, my brothers and sisters. So why should God be worried about them? He's given them enough chance, my brothers and sisters, to receive him. But you know, my brothers and sisters, the natural man will never understand the things of God. So why do God has to keep his bride? Yeah, on the set, my brothers and sisters. For how long, my brothers and sisters? For not very long. Amen. When this bride gets into a distressful state, my brothers and sisters, and you know, my brothers and sisters, Israel is fighting her battles. There will be distress of nations, my brothers and sisters. Perplexity, my brothers and sisters. There will be all kinds of Things happening, my friends. Nation will be against nation, my brothers and sisters. You know, my brothers and sisters. God, my brothers and sisters, has a plan, my brothers and sisters. Remember, we will be this, this on the doorstep of the rapture, my brothers and sisters. You know, my brothers and sisters, it's important to understand. <coughs> we don't have to lose heart when the time comes. In this distressful time, my brothers and sisters. And I believe we are also feeling it, my brothers and sisters. Economically, we, can feel, we feel it in this country, my brothers and sisters. It's not going to get better. If it does get better, it's going to go down again. You see, my brothers and sisters, wars, earthquakes, rumors of wars. <coughs> you see, my brothers and sisters, before this rapture comes, my brothers and sisters, God has to do something for his bride, my brothers and sisters. He will have to, my brothers and sisters, all the gloom, he has to raise our faith, my brothers and sisters. He has to raise our faith to stay there, my brothers and sisters. Just like how that mother eagle, she prodded that young bird, eaglet, my brothers and sisters, and he said, I want you to just lift your wings. Try and lift it up. That eagle, mother eagle, is shorter. You will fly. He assured him, my brother and sister. She assured him that you will fly. So he had to act on the word. He had to act on that word, my brother and sisters. That's how he got onto the first ladder and he got onto the second ladder. Because the mother eagle had built up that faith, my brother and sisters. And that little eaglet, my brother and sisters. We are his eaglets here, my brother and sisters. Don't you think God can raise our faith, my brothers and sisters? Amen. He can raise our faith, my brothers and sisters. Because you know, my brothers and sisters, there's nothing in us that we can boast of, my brothers and sisters. And I believe, my brothers and sisters, this time that we have, my brothers and sisters, just like Brother Branham came, my brothers and sisters, these believers, my brothers and sisters, that came from the Pentecostal ranks, my brothers and sisters, they went to sleep and there were some, my brothers and sisters, that were holding on to God, my friends, waiting for that clarion call. And God was able to alert their tenors, my brothers and sisters. And they were able to yay to that voice, my brothers and sisters. That eagle age voice, my brothers and sisters. God can do it again, my brothers and sisters, for us. There's not going to be another generation, my brothers and sisters. That generation is going to get lost. And I believe, my brothers and sisters, we're waiting patiently for that day, my brothers and sisters. I believe that, my brothers and sisters, the seven thunders, when they utter, my brothers and sisters, their voices, my brothers and sisters, we will see that same condition, rumors of wars and all going into the time. 
when the seven thunders mother uttered their voices my brothers and sisters this thing will go through go into the tribulation hour and go into the day of vengeance all these calamities will be there they won't they won't they won't ease out my brothers and sisters it's not going to get any better i believe my brothers and sisters you know this voice that god had in this generation my brothers and sisters was the voice that is still flying to that flying eagle my brothers and sisters and he's still screaming out he's still screaming out my brothers and sisters and we want to thank him my brothers and sisters you know my brothers and sisters david psalms david my brothers and sisters i just want to close here my brothers and sisters with psalms 18:6 my brothers and sisters amen Amen. <clears throat> Psalms 18:6 my brothers and sisters. David my brothers and sisters <clears throat> was running away from Saul. Saul my brothers and sisters was out to kill David. because david my brothers and sisters was that chosen vessel my brothers and sisters god had chosen him my brothers and sisters and david was very jealous of of uh, i mean saul was very jealous of david my brothers and sisters and david started to run away my brothers and sisters he started to run away and you know my brothers and sisters there came a time when david was exhausted my brothers and sisters How long is he going to run, my friends? He's a mortal man, and how long a mortal man can run? How long a mortal man or a believer can run away from God? He can't, my brothers and sisters. He has to come back. Yes. He's got to come back, my brothers and sisters. And you know, my brothers and sisters. So yeah, in verse six, my brothers and sisters, and. This is what David is crying out to the Lord, my brothers and sisters, because he is tired. He has come to the end, my brothers and sisters, and he is so tired. We are in the same period of time, my brothers and sisters. Our tired bodies can't take us. We are exhausted. We are in distress. We are in distress, my brothers and sisters, because this is not normal, my brothers and sisters. For a normal health. and for normal people my brothers and sisters as i said my brothers and sisters all of this needed to be like how it was in the book of genesis my brothers hadam's garden we are living in an abnormal space an abnormal time my brothers and sisters even time is not right live alone my brothers and sisters the devils are hounding people my brothers day and night look at the people in those reformatories or in those mad hospitals my brothers and sisters look at the amount of people that are there what's causing all that my brothers and sisters it is death your devil my brothers and sisters Amen. they have lost all their sense my brothers and sisters and they are in hospitals you see because depression my brothers and sisters is one of the symptoms of being uh, being distressed so that's why it's important <coughs> to understand david's make up my brothers and sisters in my distress my brothers and sisters i called upon the lord my brothers and sisters in our distress my brothers and sisters we must call upon the lord my brothers and sisters and cried unto god and he cried unto the lord you see my brothers and sisters that eagle mother eagle cried unto the little one my brothers and sisters that mother eagle is our great god my brothers and sisters but he is calling down my brothers and sisters but we are calling up my brothers and sisters because we are the ones my brothers and sisters that how on the said we at this end time my brothers and sisters we must call up he heard my voice out of his temple and my cry came before him even into his ears 
Our God, my brothers and sisters, he never slumbers, no sleep. He listens to us, my brothers and sisters, when we cry. In the night time, in the daytime, my brothers and sisters, in our time of, of distress, in the time of trouble, my brothers and sisters, call upon the Lord. Then the earth shook, my brothers and sisters, and trembled. The foundation also of the hills moved and was shaken because he was wrought. For one man, my brothers and sisters, for one man, God did this. For one man, God shook the earth, my brothers and sisters, and the foundations of the hills also moved. There went up a smoke out of his nostrils and fire out of his mouth. Devout coals were kindled by it. He bowed, he bowed the heavens also and came down and darkness was under his feet. And he rode upon a cherub and did fly. Yea, he did fly upon the wings of the wind. He made a darkness in he made darkness his secret place. His pavilion around about him were dark waters and thick clouds of skies. At his brightness that was before him, thick, at the brightness that was before him, his thick clouds passed. Hailstone and coals of fire. And the Lord thundered in the heavens, my brothers and sisters. And the highest gave his voice. Hailstone and coals of fire. Yea, he sent out his arrows and scattered them. And he shot out lightnings and discomforted them. Then the channels of water were seen and the foundation of the world were discovered at the rebuke. O Lord, at the blast of thy breath, thy nostrils, he sent him, he sent, he sent from above, he took him. He drew him out of all he drew him out of many waters. He delivered me from my strong enemy and from them which hated me, for they were too strong for me. They prevented me in the days of calamity, but I the Lord was but the Lord was my stay. He brought me forth also into a large place. He delivered me because he delighted in me. The Lord rewarded me according to my righteousness, according to the cleanliness of my hands, as he recompensed me. This is David's story, my brothers and sisters. A distressed man, my brothers and sisters. But see what God has done for you, my brothers and sisters. How much more, my brothers and sisters, who God will love, my brothers and sisters, his bride, my brothers and sisters, he is my brother's only bride, my brother and sisters. He looks at his son, my brother and sisters, and he sees his bride, my brother and sisters. Don't you think God can move on the scene for us, my brother and sisters? In our distress, my brother and sisters. In our calamities, my brother and sisters. And you know, my brother and sisters, our God, my brother and sisters, He is a good God, my brother. He loves us with all the love that He has, my brother and sisters. And he says, you, know, you don't have to turn your mouth. Romans 3, 5, Romans 8, 35. Who shall separate us from the love of, of, of Christ, my brothers and sisters? Who shall separate us, my brothers and sisters? Who shall separate his bride, my brothers and sisters, from the love of Christ? Who Christ who died for us, my brothers and sisters. Loving us, my brothers and sisters, is why he went up to the cross, my brothers and sisters. Loving us with all his heart, my brothers and sisters. Giving his life for us, my brothers, hanging on that cruel cross, my brothers and sisters. There's not going to be tribulation. There's not going to be distress. There's not going to be persecution. No famine, nakedness, peril, or sword. That's going to, my brothers and sisters, separate you from the love of God, my brothers and sisters. Not of all of these, my friends, they are not, my friends, and therefore it's important to understand. When we enter into this time of distress, my brothers and sisters, as Brother Jackson has seen that, my brothers and sisters, you must understand, my brothers and sisters, we have to be on our knees. 
we have to call out to our God. We got to call out to him. We got to build our faith, my brothers and sisters. You got to build your faith, my brothers and sisters, and you got to reach out. You got to reach out to our God, my brothers and sisters, because we wouldn't know the day and hour, my brothers and sisters, when the son of man will come, my brothers and sisters, and he will come through the seven thunders, my brothers and sisters. He will come, my brothers and sisters, not in physical way, my brothers and sisters. He will come, my brothers and sisters, via that angel, my brothers and sisters. You know that angelic being, my brothers and sisters, will come. And I believe, my brothers and sisters, we will know about that anointing when it comes, my brothers and sisters. Because our faith would be raised up, my brothers and sisters. And we would be in that space of time, my brothers and sisters, not lagging behind. Not lagging behind. We have to be in that, my brothers and sisters, time period. And I believe we need to walk on, my brothers and sisters. There's no turning back, my brothers and sisters. But we need to be in that, my brothers and sisters, like we are in this time now. God is moving us, and we want a blessing for that. May the Lord have blessing upon His word, my brothers and sisters. And I want to bless the Lord for that. Amen. Let's stand to our feet, my brothers and sisters. Let us pray, my brothers and sisters. Heavenly Father, we come to you, Lord. Lord, we thank you, God, Father, for this hour, my God. We thank you, Lord, Father. We see your word, my brothers and sisters, for our time, my brothers and sisters. And I know, my God, Father, you are the God, my, my Father. You have been with us for so long, my brothers and sisters. And Lord, you see a generation here, Lord. Lord, a young generation, my brothers and sisters. That I am, my brothers and sisters. And Satan, my brothers and sisters, wants to serve them, my brothers and sisters. Lord, we pray for them, Lord. You are able, my God, to keep them in line, my brothers. My Lord, you're able to help them, Lord, in this hour of time, my God. Lord, we have walked, my brothers and sisters, Lord. And many are tired and, and distressed, my brothers and sisters, by many things, my brothers. Lord, I pray, God, that you touch us this night. You strengthen the ministry, my, my God, round the world, my God. I pray that you'll strengthen the ministry wherever they are, my, my God. I pray, Lord, that you will reach out to them, Lord. You will, my God, you will strengthen them, my God. You will give them added strength, my God. Like an eagle will stare it up and nest, my, my dear God. Help them this day, Lord. Bless their hearts, Lord. Bless your servant here also, my, my dear God. We pray, Father, for thy years today, Lord. Bless them, Lord, and lead them, Lord. Protect them, Lord, as we go through this time, Lord. And I know, Father, we will see many things before us, Lord. And we wait on you, Lord, and we just bless your mighty name in the precious name of Jesus. Amen. 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 We want to thank the Lord for his precious word. We know that the word of God says that heavens and earth will pass away, but his word will not pass away. We thank the Lord uh, that he's given our brother strength. I realize that he was not too well, but may the Lord bless him. We're going to sing a song to the Lord tonight. If there's anyone that has a need, you can come forward. Amen. He's always there for me. Very carefully. Watching over me Yeah. 
is always there for me. Eating all my needs. Jesus is always there for me. Is always there.
may blow and the rain may fall, but it won't just wash away. The blood will stand the raging storm in applied with love and sin. Stay secure, you can rest assured that the blood is holy. Said son, now don't you worry, for the blood is set to sleep. The wind may blow and the rain may fall, but it won't just wash away. The blood will stand the raging storm in a blind with love and care. Stay secure, you can rest assured that the blood is stolen. children. The hour is late, my dear children. The night is far spent, my dear children. What will you do with this Christ, my dear children? What will you do with me tonight, my dear children? Will you crucify me afresh? Nay, my dear children. Hey, my dear ones, oh, my dear children, I pray the price for you, my dear children. 
my dear ones, there's times ahead of you, my dear children. <laughs> take heed, my dear children. Take heed, my dear ones. Take heed. <laughs> Curtain is closing, my dear children. There's very little time left, my dear children, to get your lights right, my dear children. I will be moving, my dear children, to my, dear, my Jewish people, my dear children, and there will be time no more. What will you do then? Serve me, my dear children. All I have, serve me with, with honesty, my dear children. Serve me and call out. Call out to your God, my dear children, and I will be there with you. That's the God. Amen. Let's just bow for a word of prayer. Heavenly Father, Lord, we thank you once again. Lord, that we've had this.